A warm welcome to your Barbados Today Evening News Update for Monday, November 8th. The island's healthcare institutions today began preparations for the rollout of COVID-19 safe zones in that stem in the spread of the viral illness. Acting Chief Medical Officer Dr. Anton Bess today clarified that while the emergency COVID-19 order published at the weekend states when the law takes effect, Minister of Health Lieutenant Colonel Jeffrey Bostick will determine when the policy is rolled out. The safe zones apply to all governmental and private health care providers and requires that unvaccinated people operating within the sector be tested for COVID-19 every seven days and fully vaccinated persons every 42 days. COVID-19 deaths have moved to 182 while there were 196 new infections recorded on Sunday. A 79-year-old Barbadian man passed away at the Harrison Point facility today. He was unvaccinated. On Sunday, a 46-year-old man who was also unvaccinated died at the Accident and Emergency Department of the Queen Elizabeth Hospital. The new cases include 82 males and 114 females. 915 people are in isolation facilities and 6,780 are in home isolation. Under the National Vaccination Program, a total of 129,966 persons, that's 48% of the total population or 57% of the eligible population are fully vaccinated. The former Prime Minister of St. Vincent and the Grenadines, Sir James Mitchell, continues to receive treatment at the intensive care unit of the Queen Elizabeth Hospital after being airlifted here last week. Sir James was diagnosed with dengue and a number of other health-related conditions. A statement issued by his family today said the 90-year-old Caribbean statesman continues to receive excellent care and attention from the doctors and nurses. The agriculture industry must have high standards, that's the view of Agriculture Minister Indar Ware, who today urged the operators of public and private farms to raise the bar as he toured the rollout of new mobile facilities for workers at Monk Pleasant Plantation in St. Philip and Searles Plantation in Christchurch. This is really a fundamental and I, I'm, I'm appalled at how workers were asked to show up on farms every day without having the convenience of a bathroom. What we have now will be a modern facility that allows for them to be able to charge their mobile phones as well. A facility with powered by um, renewable energy because it has the solar panel at the top. It also has the temperature gauge so that we can still check temperatures. And of course, you can sanitize before entering the facility as well and the female bathrooms are also uh, retrofitted with the necessary uh, disposable unit for females who when necessary would want such a disposable unit so that this is in keeping with a promise that we've made and i want all barbadians to appreciate the fact that even though we are going through a very difficult period uh, the government is still performing and is still delivering on their behalf. Government has invested about $450,000 to acquire the 10 mobile units. The BAMC's Chief Executive Officer, Orlando Atherley, says the field workers at eight BAMC plantations will benefit. Delivered the first few were delivered um, before, and we expect another four to be delivered by the end of November, and then we shall wrap up the final handover, hopefully by the end of December of the um, the balance which would bring us to 10 and therefore each farm we anticipate will have two of these facilities be used by the workers. There's regional and international news after this short break. Hi, I am Onika. I am a mother, I am a daughter and I'm a wine educator. When vaccines first came on the scene last year, I was really apprehensive about getting vaccinated. I was worried about taking a drug that I felt was experimental. So at first, I really wasn't about it. I decided to get vaccinated. I had to acknowledge the fact that I am asthmatic and my son is also asthmatic. I have a career in wine. We depend on our senses and I decided that I did not want to risk it for being afraid of taking a vaccine. Coronavirus has affected everyone around the globe. And keeping this in mind, Make sure that your decision is not a selfish one and that you're thinking of the benefits of the whole.
Let's roll up our sleeves and get back to living. To regional news, Jamaica has administered more than 1 million COVID-19 vaccines since its inoculation program got underway in March. But as we hear in this report from Television Jamaica, even with this milestone, the government is continuing its fight against vaccine hesitancy. The health minister, along with community health aides, public health nurses and doctors, on a house-to-house -house vaccination drive. The aim is to take vaccines to communities that are not close to a fixed site and to persons who are not able to travel to get inoculated. But some Jamaicans continue to insist that they will not take the jab. So the minister was asked whether the ministry is winning the fight against vaccine hesitancy. We still are far away from, from getting the numbers that we would like to get ideally. Um, the truth is, as many Jamaicans as possible who qualify would like to get vaccinated. While it is true that we are inching closer towards achieving um, the targets, um, we need to increase the pace. But it's not a function anymore of people not having the vaccines or having access. It's a function of addressing the uncertainties and the hesitancy. And it's going to require all of us to play our part in pushing for that. Health officials have been urging pregnant women to take the vaccine. It's why Medical Officer of Health for Trelawney, Dr. Diane Dale, appealed specifically to pregnant women who are delaying vaccination. Some pregnant women are not doing very well with COVID infection. So we want to encourage them, especially the pregnant women, to know that it is safe to take the COVID-19 vaccine while pregnant. On the international front, former U.S. President Barack Obama today warned that the world's largest countries were still falling short on climate action as he addressed the U.N. Climate Summit in Glasgow, Scotland. The UN has so far announced major steps to reduce coal consumption and stop deforestation, but many environmental groups have criticised the summit for its lack of concrete action. Global Witness has also released a report showing that COP organisers have granted access to hundreds of fossil fuel lobbyists. Former American President Barack Obama was the star attraction on Monday. The Hawaiian native spoke of the very real effects climate change is having on Ireland. Island nations. In many ways, our islands are uh, the canary in the coal mine in this situation. Uh, that, that, that they are sending a message now that if we don't act and act boldly, it's going to be too late. Um, and it also highlighted the fact that this is not something that's 10 or 20 or 30 years down the road. This is now, and we have to act now to help with adaptation and resilience, which I know is a theme of COP26 today. That's news, but for the very latest, visit our website at www.barbidastoday.bb. You can also subscribe to our e-paper, email updates, or like us on Facebook, and sign up for our breaking news alerts via WhatsApp. We're also on Izumi Media and Bus Terminals, as well as Screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you. You can also hear us on Mix 96.9 FM and Capital Media HD 99.3 FM. <laughs>